Hey, it's Norm from Tesla.com. I'm still here at Disney Animation Studios. I'm about to talk to Andrew, Andy Hendrickson. You're the CTO, the yep. tech guy here at Disney Animation Studios. You build, you and your team build yep. the tools for all the CG, yeah. all the rendering stuff. I'm the king nerd. Yep. Oh, that's, <laughs> you're the perfect person for us to talk to. And you actually, you actually worked at ILM before. Yeah, years ago. Adam, wow. Started that's in ILM in 1993. So. Awesome. Well, it's all part of the family now. Yeah, yeah. And yep. Disney has, you have ILM, there's Pixar, and uh -huh. there's Disney Animation Studios. Right. And you guys have recently, the past couple of years, exploded in yeah. terms of your success. Yeah. Right. Wreck It Ralph. Been very fortunate. Oh yep. my God. The highest grossing <laughs> animated feature of all time with Frozen last year. Yep, yep. And now today we're going to talk about Big Hero 6, yep. which is, from a technical standpoint, pretty amazing. Um, yeah. You did a presentation earlier today and I want to talk about little, some of the things okay. in terms of the rendering. Great. Now some, some graphics nerds out there might know RenderMan, <laughs> right? You, right. You heard sure. it, it's a commercial product, people sure. can buy it, it's a rendering engine. Sure. And for Big Hero 6 you developed and your team developed a new rendering system. Right. Uh, not an entire tool set but a, a, like a pipeline right, for right. Uh, global illumination. Right. Um, now he explained very briefly, I know it's a very <laughs> technical topic, uh, what okay. that idea, why so, it's challenging. Global illumination is the, the, a way to light these scenes where you put light into the scene, energy, uh, and energy bounces around off of objects and illuminates other objects, ultimately making it to the camera or ultimately being absorbed. Uh, and that's kind of what, what we built, is a system to be able to trace all this energy around in the scene and really keep the scenes being energy conserving, keep them being kind of physically based, yet not photorealistic because we want fantastic on the screen. Right. So stylized. we found it was stylized and right. we made it stylized. And yeah. you know, like traditional animation or mm -hmm. CG with ray tracing, for example, mm -hmm. it's very computationally intensive. Right. We're talking about, you know, even if you approximate how much yeah, yeah. light, that's still tons and tons and it's it all is. scattered and random. Yeah. So what about this new rendering system, which is called so Hyperion, Hi that optimizes that? Hyperion uh, allows us to actually take all this ray tracing and what would be normal randomness in terms of how the rays are shot into a scene and organize it at every bounce, reorganize it so it overlays on top of modern computer hardware and calculation ability a lot nicer. And mm. so we can do a lot more with it and put in a bunch more complexity into the scenes that we've ever been able to do before, largely because of architecting it for the machinery we have now. Right, so it's like an organization system, uh -huh. so, so it organizes and groups and prioritizes the calculations yeah. so that, for example, if light from sun is coming into a room, it, you're, you're getting exactly what you want out of that rendering yeah. process. Yeah, so the light will come in and on first bounce, depending upon what it's bouncing on, it could go crazy, yeah. right? If it's on a diffuse surface like this wall, it'll just go everywhere. We then take where that light goes, record all of its intersections with other pieces of geometry, mm -hmm. and then organize it so it fits well and is easy to calculate and is uh, kind of coherent. We make it, we re coheritize it, if you will, and, as it goes forward, so. And the number of bounces, typically as you increase that, it becomes more photorealistic. Yeah. So you're finding this balance between how complex computationally you want yeah. to be and stylistically what goal right. you want to reach. Right, so we can do lots and lots of bounces and we do and what becomes more realistic is how the, how the light flows into the scene. We still have fantastic designs and fantastic materials that make it super, super kind of uh, fantasy mm -hmm. but the way the energy moves around is very, very realistic. It's so physically based. Literally the photons, the pho right? Literally photons. <laughs> Virtual literally photons. Literally doing photons, yeah. yeah. And you, you mentioned materials, so uh -huh. it's not just about bouncing. We were talking yeah. about, uh, for example, you know, uh, yeah, Baymax yeah, yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, he's made of vinyl, right. so it's not going to bounce exactly off of like a mirror or metal. Right. You're getting subsurface scattering. Yeah. And Some of the energy goes off his surface and bounces in a diffuse way. Some of the energy goes through him and bounces around inside. And huh. some of those bounces, the energy leaks out and then comes back out to the camera. So all that energy moving in and out of these objects, particularly vinyl, turns out ping pong balls are also hard, hard for the same reason. Right. Uh, we have to have a lot of bounces and you have to calculate a lot of ray tracing around to actually make it look like it's translucent vinyl instead it's of hard plastic. There's a glow around yeah, it. Yeah, you're able to see, especially yeah. human skin, you want yeah. photorealistic. Like, you, exactly. If you shine a light on your skin, exactly. you see through it. Subsurface scattering and yeah. human skin is the same problem. Right? Ah. So our main character is made of subsurface scattering. So <laughs> that's awesome. So it, was, it was a lot of like bouncing around. It's, there a, we go. it's an awesome showcase yeah. of that technology. And we found that you know doing things like ten bounces on on Baymax was not an unrealistic number. It actually made him look 
a lot better. So, okay. so we did, and we were able to because of Hyperion. Now, it really seems like the city, San Francisco, mm -hmm. is one of the main characters of this yep. film. And a lot of technology that your team built in terms of the lighting allowed yep. the city to be built out fully. I think yeah. it, 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 some of that's procedurally generated yeah. and then some of it's actually built yeah. out. Yeah, a lot of the city is procedurally generated, uh, putting in, you know, every, every district has a style, mm -hmm. uh, a dialect of the district, a yeah. style dialect. And then we build from the San Francisco City Assessor's Map, the foundations, we yeah. build up each building. And that works pretty well for most of it. But there are some hero buildings that you want to fly by, that you want to see inside. Mm. You want to see whether they have kitchens and mm -hmm. bathrooms and classrooms and things like that you can see inside. So we built this whole world largely because Hero and Baymax fly through this world. There's an actual scene where they <laughs> fly. And that's something <laughs> that, you know, in an old movie or something, it would be a matte painting yeah. or you would be only designing the parts of the city yep. you would see, maybe using building to obstruct yeah. the background. Yeah. But here you're able to elevate higher and see right. a whole landscape. We're looking for in the future having kind of no limits on complexity to making these films. So when a filmmaker comes and says, I'm making a film called Big Hero 6, and it's going to happen in San Francisco, and they're going to fly through the city. It doesn't scare us. Right. <laughs> wow. And, and I, I'm from San Francisco, so yeah. and while I might not be able to find my exact house yeah. in there, at least based on the city accessory yeah, yeah. maps, it would be that same height or yeah, that yeah. plot of land, that block and lot number yeah. would be there. I lived for 12 years in Laurel Heights, and I can actually find oh, my house there. <laughs> that's so cool. When the project is done, you have uh -huh. so much data, you know, mm -hmm. terabytes and terabytes of just assets and models. Mm -hmm. um, does that all get shelved, or is there an opportunity to reuse that and, and uh, maybe re explore it later yeah, on? Yeah, it turns out we have uh, what we call animation research library, which is our internal archives. It has 60 million pieces of flat art in it. Yeah. Uh, and we're adding to it now CG assets come in. Uh, and it's, it's interesting because we have all the models and we're holding those as actual digital assets mm -hmm. that we can reuse in other films. And, wow. and you'll start to see there, there are times when other parts of other films may mm -hmm. come into this, mm -hmm. our prior films. And well, from a consumer standpoint, <laughs> maybe when the home rendering technology yeah. gets good enough, then maybe San Francisco can be released as a map where you can explore or something. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. would be super really cool. Good. Right now, it's so many terabytes of data would be infeasible. Yeah. But as, and time goes on, as time goes on, when right. a terabyte fits on a thumb drive, yeah. you never know. Awesome. Um, what about the, uh, the population rendering? There's a lot of crowd scenes, yeah. and you have a new uh, system for generating procedurally characters yeah, we, and crowds. Yeah, we wrote a production system called Dem in. It allows us to take uh, a wide variety of body styles, head mm -hmm. shapes, torsos, clothing, and allows us to be able to, with, with sets of sliders, actually make different characters. However, it's not just a set of sliders because these characters all have to hit a model sheet and, a, and, a, and it has to look like it's of the world. So right. it's allowing some stylization but still, still staying on, on model sheet and on model for the world. And it allowed all of our artists to kind of build their own avatars. And it's kind of like a video game. Exactly. Create and the those are the characters that are in the movie. Uh, so you see people walking around, it's Disney Animation employees walking that's around. That's really cool. <laughs> the scope of the film just yeah. is amplified. And it comes story first, so like, you know, yes, the story story is king, that's for sure. Mm. But what you want to build is a world uh, that you want to live in, a compelling world you want to live in that supports the idea and the theme of the story. Mm -hmm. And I think we've really done that well here. And so. You, Great story, coupled with compelling world that has all kinds of awesome, you know, visuals and things like that. That that's what makes a big feature these days. And rendering that, you're talking about maybe the yeah. 75th most powerful supercomputer in the world <laughs> for making a movie. Yeah. And built out 55,000 cores. 55,000 cores. Said? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, that, and that's maybe that's a big machine. That's just for Disney Animation Studio. Yeah. Because that's not what ILM uses. They have their Death Star cores. Yeah, the, they have the Death film, Star cores, right? Right, and then and uh, Pixar has their own clusters. Right, and this is just you, for Disney Animation. And you build that out, and this movie three times more computationally complex. This movie is more complex than our last three movies combined. Just so geometry wise. Just geometry wise, what's on screen? Yeah. Oh my gosh. It, it's it's uh, it's a lot, and. And because of the challenge of the world and what we wanted to put in it, we had to build, you know, we built a new render. We had to do a lot of things from scratch just to get this movie out the door. But it shows. When you look at the movie, you'll notice. It's like this is not like other movies we've seen. There's a lot on the screen here. So. Does that stuff get pushed forward into the next film? Of course. Right. And, and with your partners with ILM and yep. with Pixar, ideas are exchanged? And yeah, yeah, and for us, our next film here uh, coming out has been announced as Zootopia. So imagine lots of fur. 
Mm. Okay. <laughs> Light going through hair and fur uh -huh. also uh -huh. a big challenge. Yeah, so that's kind of one of our next directions. Wow, so. awesome. <laughs> I, I can't yeah. wait. I hope that people, if you see Big Hero 6, and just for the characters look amazing, appreciate some of the yeah. work that Andy and your team do. I, I don't yeah. think that, you know, the, on the technical side, yeah, we're usually Yeah, we're usually behind the scenes, yeah. but, uh, but here particularly, you know, we're building technology to make the art move forward, and then and then a challenge comes up from a story or a piece of art that's like, can we make this? And, and our answer is always, yes, we can. We're not actually sure how, but we'll, we'll get there. You're working we'll on a there. beta yeah. the entire time. We're in beta, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of faith that we're going to make it, and we do. And um, we do every time. So. Thank you so much, Andy, okay. for chatting with me. Certainly. Geeking out about <laughs> rendering technology. Uh, I'm Norm from Test. Well, more stuff like this on Test.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time.